Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's story deals with a true account of the notorious Dr. Crippen, London, 1910. Now say what you will about the old boy, but I feel we owe him a debt of gratitude. For when Jack the Ripper took murder down the cold, dark alleyways of London town, Dr. Crippen was kind enough to bring murder back home, where it belongs. So sit back, enjoy your fish and chips, and dim the lights, for we have a tale worth telling.
the inspector. Has not yet arrived, Robbie, and I'd like to keep this madness out of this office. There, there, there. Steady yourself now. Oh, that's better. Now, carry on. Upward and onward. Yes, sir. Ew! Thank God you're here, man. The whole city has gone mad. It hasn't been like this since. The Ripper case. I know. I've been hearing that a lot lately. I'm sorry, John. I'm a bit of a dither. Mm. King's Council is sending someone down straight away. <sighs> Please, don't tell me it. Your Lord, Randall Crisp. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, from His Majesty's Council. You are Inspector Do? I am, Your Lordship. You interviewed this Crippen on two separate occasions. On both, searched his premises, top to bottom, stem to stern, and failed to notice a dead wipe in the cellar. Mm. Fine detecting, Inspector. And you gave this man a seven-day head start. How sporting of you. He was a very pleasant fellow, your lordship. Murder. Mutilation sounds charming. At this moment in time, I don't give a damn about his temperament or his impeccable table manners. I do, however, care about his whereabouts. My God, man, look out your window. You can taste the fear, the sheer panic. It stirs up old memories, and I tell you, sir, they are not pleasant. Sweetie Todd, the demon barber of Fleet Street, Jack the Ripper, and now London's latest monster, this Dr. Crippen. Hmm. You were on the Ripper case. Yes, sir. As a young detective, my first case was the Ripper's last victim. It's a, uh, Miss Mary Kelly. A memento, Inspector. No, Your Lordship. A reminder. It reminds me every day. As well it should. The Crown cannot and will not tolerate another Ripper case. These headlines scream murder. And make no mistake, the world is listening. This fiend has put us all upon the world stage. Nothing less than the reputation of the British Empire hangs in the balance. So down to it, Inspector. Can you show me on this map where our good Dr. Crippen is? No, sir. Presently, I cannot. Is he enjoying the company of Miss Lenev? Is he in London? Is he still in England? My God, man, is he even in this bloody hemisphere? So what you're telling me is that when I'm standing before the, His Majesty's Royal Court and the King himself, all I can say is that all Inspector Dew and Scotland Yard are sure of is that our latest monster is out there somewhere. Some place in the world. What a great comfort. And I tell you, sir, that all that can be done will be done. Inspector Do, I suggest you put that thing away and focus all your powers of perception on this. I don't give a damn if you have to use it as a crystal ball. Just fine, Crippen. Good day, sir. Is it my imagination? Was I just violently chastised by that man? Well, that's one word for it. <laughs> what is it, Sir Jack? I just can't believe that Dr. Crippen would do such a dark deed. Hmm. He seemed like such a nice fellow. <sighs> ah, but I've got a bloody roast beef sandwich and a nice big bottle of stout. Oh, nice, waiting for me. And where, pray tell, will you be dining this fine afternoon? Well, the morgue, of course. <laughs> uh, always the romantic. Well, bon appétit. Au revoir, I'm sure, Inspector. <laughs>
Uh, Sir Jack, don't forget your favorite detective. Oh, oh. You know, you really should read one of these someday. A Hounds of Boscoville. Mm. Possibly. After this case. Ah, the game's afoot! How many years will he on me? I keep hearing his name. Do that with his shadow. I used to carry the flame. Matter of fact, I am. The rich widow Miss Blackmore's passed away. John, what are you doing here? I've seen you since Hamburg. What's going on here? Looks like the whole place has gone mad. So what's the news today? Oh boy, seems there's a new monster in town. And his name is Dr. Crippen. Seems he cut off his wife into little pieces and sprinkled her all over town. Hey, they read that Hamburg stuff, huh? Either I'm having hallucinations 
or this is one of the strangest days in my life. What is it? If my eyes aren't deceiving me, it looks like Georgie Porgy from Liverpool's across the street. My uh, fact it is, he's been here for the whole summer, staying with his grandfather, Sir George Lockwood, knighted by Queen Victoria herself, and was part of a personal guard. And they say he had a toy affair with the old girl. You don't say. Tell me more. Oh, yeah. Georgie says he found a whole box of love letters the two wrote to each other while he was in India. He even hired a pet name for her, Binky. Oh, Binky, you were a saucy minx. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, John, I haven't seen you since Liverpool. Liverpool. John, I got to get back inside. Roll Miss Crow will have my guts for garters. If I lose this job, I won't have anything. Hey, John, they need more good mourners. Nothing to it. Easy money. Sounds great, Polly boy. Drinking money. Come on, Georgie Porgy. Let's help bury the dead. I'm in. Wait till you see what my grandfather brought back from India. Hits a guitar with 18 bloody strings. This I got to see. <laughs> so, is this our new crew? Well, you could start by cleaning out the hearse. Seems we had a bit of a leakage problem. Sounds delightful.
My good man, I believe what you need is a good stiff drink. Oh, yes. I know I could use one. Yeah, yeah. Or two. <laughs> Murder. Mutilation. No proper Englishman could have done this dastardly deed. Now I say, a proper murder is one thing, but mutilation? It is an abomination. It is in poor taste and simply isn't done. Not in Mayfair, not four doors down. Did you know him quite well, sir? Never met the man, but I do know Englishmen. And Englishmen do not chop their wives into little pieces and place them all around town. It must have been quite the mess to clean up. He must have used the tub. My dear friend, our good friend, the good doctor, was not an Englishman at all. Really? Mm-hmm. Come closer, lad. He's an American. <laughs> really? An American? That makes things quite a different matter. Ah, quite right. No, I believe you know that. Yes, lad, I believe you know this. He was always such a fine, kind gentleman. The American, the good doctor. Always there with a smile and his helping hand. The American, the good doctor. Quite right. Shall we go, lad? A little bit of the bubbly. Never prude or lewd or rude in the least. The American, the good doctor. They make him sound like a man with all demons released. Oh, oh no, sir. That's quite cool. We were commiserate. What? <laughs> he really talked to you. Yeah, when he comes to town, he buy a proper round. 